Today we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Welcome to Bill Myers Inspires. My idea for this show was to invite guests and get the conversation started, to take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. And we encourage our listeners to look within themselves to take decisive action to make a positive difference. Welcome to Bill Myers Inspires. I'm your host, Bill Myers, and this is the month of March. And the month of March is um, Women's History Month. And so um, in tribute, in the honor of Women's History Month, I decided to do a far-reaching thing like ask the owner of this network, the Inspired Choices Network, to be the guest today uh, because she is a woman in business and I'm sure has plenty of things to offer um, on this topic. And so I do want to uh, welcome Christine MacGyver. Christine, welcome. Thank you, Bill. And it's MacGyver, not MacGyver. MacGyver. Yes, MacGyver. Exactly. Not like McDonald's or something yeah. like. Okay, I got you. And and so I apologize for that. See, women and women, <laughs> you know, they're already starting. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mean anything by that. Um, so March is Women's History Month, and in celebration, uh, my guest today is the founder and owner and CEO of the Inspired Choices Network, Christine McIver. We will discover the background and motivation behind the creation of this growing media company and what the vision of the future is for the Inspired Choices Network. Um, before we get started, I want to sort of set the stage here. Uh, I went on to Forbes and pulled up a, a pretty amazing article because what I was curious about were what are the major challenges that women face in business? So I thought I would start this by laying out what Forbes says are the eight major challenges that women face in business. Number one, limited funding. Not all business people are fortunate enough to have an investor or financier for their business. Some have to bootstrap their entrepreneurial ventures, rely on credit cards or raise capital on their own. Women's businesses are among the leading ventures that lack financial support. It, it is also common for women to be denied loans because of gender and cultural biases. Many institutions tend to fund male-owned businesses. That's number one. Number two, balancing responsibilities. A large number of women are not just entrepreneurs or career people. They have families, spouses, and other responsibilities. Demands from personal and professional commitments can pressure a woman to abandon either her business or her family. The family expects her to be a mother and wife, while the business requires her to be the leader and show commitment. It becomes more difficult for those who lack social support because they have to carry the entire burden by themselves. Some women can balance these two spheres of their lives while others are completely overwhelmed. Uh, number three, fear of failure. Entrepreneurship or running a business is risky and entails unforeseen circumstances. Never fear failure. You'll, you will never try if you fear failure. No one goes into business with a guarantee of success. Fear of the known and the unknown is a major issue for women. They dread failing especially if the people surrounding them were skeptical of their capability in business. This fear is toxic and perilous because women may end up operating from a place of fear instead of confidence. As a result, they will fail in business even when they were meant to succeed. These are the, the first three items on this list, and I want to come back and revisit the remaining items on this list, but but I think it's appropriate at this time to listen to our guest, Christine <laughs> McIver. Oh, Welcome, Christine. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Bill. It's so funny to listen to you say that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I want to get it right. So, um, 
so so what do you think about that? I just named off what Forbes list um, suggests are the eight major challenges. And I just named off three of those. Number one, limited funding. Two, balancing responsibilities. And three, fear of failure. So can, can we just like touch on those? And you can <laughs> take them one at a time, limited funding. Uh, because I would think that some of these particularly the limited funding thing, is not just something that is a, a woman thing. Uh, also, I would suggest that other minority groups um, other than white face this very challenge also. Absolutely. I mean, anything that I'm going to say about women today does not negate the challenges of other ethnic groups or or communities uh, out there that are struggling. Um, I, first of all, thank you for having me today. This is a, a real honor. I, uh, I love your show and, and I'm so privileged to be able to produce it a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, and to be on here today is, is great. You are, those top three things that you touched on, they're so real. And, you know, it's not, and I know we're gonna look at some, some women in history information, but we're still trying to prove ourselves. Women are still trying to prove themselves. We are, it has changed significantly, yes, but we are still very much trying to prove ourselves. And if we slip up or if we are struggling or our children need attention, the knee jerk reaction is that the woman is going to do it. There are employers, I'm gonna tell you a quick story. There are employers out there that still hire us based on our age because of okay we're a woman okay so maybe we they can pay us less so they're going to put us in that role i was in human resources for 20 years i'm not just spewing this off the top of my head i've no, had, no, no. go go I, right ahead i've yeah. had arguments with my employers uh, because that was my job to, to challenge them right but i was actually hired in this great company i love this company i was in there for about i don't know six months or whatever. And they told me about, there was a competition between myself and one other person. And they, I said, so what made that made you decide on me? And they all looked at each other and they were grinning. And I'm like, okay, dudes, what? And there was a woman in the room and she said, you're not going to like this. And I said, okay, tell me. And they said, because you, you, you two were matched with similar education, similar background, ca right. capabilities. The only difference was is that you've already had children and she didn't. So are they suggesting that you are a safer bet because you don't have to deal with that nine month uh, burden yeah. thing? That I, they, were, they, were, they were betting that I was no longer going to procreate and that was gonna save the bottom line. Wow. Yeah, I could have smashed them right in the next week because they knew how I felt about making decisions based on, um, well, that was completely against human rights code, Sure. what they did, right? right? And that's going on still very, very much today. So we women are still trying to prove themselves worthy. Okay. We're still, we, you know, everybody has struggles, everybody. Women are still having to prove themselves more because if we have children, because if we, you know, we are more, more of the emotional sex, we, you know, we have more in touch with our intuition, we are definitely more emotional. So if we're in a meeting and we get emotional, we are then judged. We cannot make strong, tough decisions because right, of our right. emotions. And you and I both know that that ability to be in touch with, be vulnerable, be in tune with our intuition is a contribution in the world and definitely in business. Right. Well, well it's, un it's unfortunate because oftentimes the way that looks is when a man asserts himself, you know, it's, it's, you know, strength and all that sort of thing. A woman does it and all of a sudden she is a derogatory female dog um, exactly. and that it gets characterized that way and just sort of pushed aside. You, you know, I, well, while we're on the subject, first of all, I've always had a tremendous fondness for women in business. Now, to prove this, this particular thing out and a preference 
quite frankly, not just a fondness, but a preference. As an actor, uh, for years, I mean, we would have, you know, you've got your agents, your repres, you know, your reps and stuff. So my agents, um, I always preferred that my agent be a female, not a gay male. I want to be very clear, but just not male at all. And the reason is uh, a male asserts himself in just sort of a black, white, you know, oh, you don't want this. You're not interested in this. I'm working my ass off for you, blah, blah, blah. And you don't want, it's like, oh, well, you're going to run a guilt trip on me. And that type of thing without ever hearing or even caring that you have a point of view hmm. Uh, and you wish to be heard. And this is where the difference is. The one word that you did not mention as you were sort of citing female qualities, and I'm proud to, to throw it out there, is nurture. Nurture. Women are the mothers. They have masters in nurturing. That is the, the one of the greatest assets there. And I believe that when you are in career building and you are out there, there are times, particularly as performers, I don't know many that don't fall under the extremely vulnerable category. And so decisions are made, um, vulnerabilities are placed out there. Um, and I think that for me, it was always much better to have someone who would hear me out. Because an, as, a, as a performer, you don't work for an agent. An agent gets a percentage of what I bring in. So it's very clear that I need to be the boss of me. <laughs> and so if I have something I need to say, I do not like the brow beating and the idea that I have to bite my tongue. Uh, I need to be able to speak freely in that circumstance. And I've always found that the best representation I have ever had has been from a female. I can take that all the way back to my mama at the end yeah. of the day. So that is uh, not something that I take lightly. That's not something that I throw out in a trivial manner. That is something that I hold strong to that truth. And so, um, so anyway, I, I just wanted to, to offer that because when I talk about my encouragement and, and uh, excitement about women in business, it is 100%. And same thing happens when I'm in the hiring position. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's like Charlie's Angels. I want to be completely flanked, <laughs> not because of some male ego thing, but because I trust that these folks will be looking out for my best interest and what's in the best interest of the baby that we are giving birth to, i.e. the project or the thing. It's about the thing and being able to bring the best to that, not, you know, some strange pissing match, you know, yeah. and guys and, you know what I mean? So it, yeah. it just turns into, you know, this, this thing that I, I just am like, really not, not in my decision-making process, yeah. you know? Well, so. You know, what I, what I want to say before we go to break is that, um, you know, there's the hiring piece, but when women in business are going out for funding, OK, yes, they've created these. Um, I know in Canada for sure they've created these, you know, women in business grants and loans and all this. And and yet the bar I have personally found this bill because mm -hmm. I've gone and looked. I've built this network with m every penny from my wallet. Okay. And I have gone out to the government again and again to see about qualifying and the fact of the matter is, is that we, most of us have had to start low, right? Like we smarted really, really small. And then, um, and then, but the expectation is, you know, you have this many employees, you have this much payroll, you have this, you have this, you have this. It's like, I can't qualify. I right. can't qualify. And then I go to the bank and they still look at us like we are not yet up to par. But here's the positive. Before we go to break, I want to say this. Okay. Because the bar is high and the expectation that we are not going to re respond is, is low, we're stretching ourselves. Women are stretching themselves, I think, more in a lot of cases than men are today. And so what that is doing is that's taking us farther, faster. Now, 
it's, it's hard. It's painful. Sometimes it's lonely sometimes for a lot of us in our own business. Mm -hmm. However, just like the women before us, they forged where there wasn't any path as well. And that's what we are doing and, and successfully doing. Yeah. You know, and, and you're right. That's yeah. Stretching you're stretching and actually showing people the way and, and uh, I, you know, yeah, I can see the uphill uh, battle and all that. And you're right about the government support thing. And that happens again, you know, it's, it's um, you know, the people of color thing. Go, yeah, try to go get a loan and see. You, you, they're going to recite basically what you just said. In other words, there's just this, this barrier that has been put up. And, um, and you're, you're in Canada and, you know, I'm in the U.S. and I, yeah, it, it is a systematic issue and, and a wrong thinking that we just keep grinding it out. And hopefully one day we'll be able to uh, look at a more level playing field um, and get the actual support that is needed to grow these businesses because everything, you know, bootstrapping <laughs> only goes so far, you know, uh, and it's hard to get to scale. It's hard to get to the scale that is being asked, but you are right. Women are persevering and, and are making great strides, um, exemplary strides. So, yay. Yay. <laughs> so we are ready for our break here. And uh, you're listening to Bill Myers Inspires. And my guest today is the CEO of the Inspired Choices Network, Ms. Christine McIver. We'll be back in just a minute. Today, we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives. From our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Tune in every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bill Myers Inspires as he and his guests take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. Emmy Award winning actor Bill Myers is an accomplished actor, jazz musician, filmmaker, writer, educator, and speaker. As a biracial man who's both black and white, Bill leverages his background, talent, and voice through creativity, compassion, and connection as activism for social justice to focus on uniting the divide and compelling change. Bill Myers Inspires encourages listeners to look within themselves and take decisive action to make a positive difference. For more information, visit his website, BillMyersInspires.com, and sign in for the latest news and updates. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires here on the Inspired Choices Network. We're here every Friday. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us. And now, let's get back to the conversation. We are back, and you are listening to Bill Myers Inspires with my guest today, Christine McIver. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a little glottal stop there. You just have to sort of break it up and take that little slight. Um, so I, before we go on, I just want to say something, you know, um, uh, being a performer and, and all that, you know, m most of my life, um, you know, people come up and they, they, they oftentimes, you know, it's lather you with how talented you are and all that sort of thing. And I get always a little self-conscious about it because 
I'm, I'm thinking about what I, all the things that I missed um, and how I can improve whatever happened. So sometimes it runs in conflict when someone's telling you how wonderful you are and you're like, oh, if you only knew. But in the midst of that, um, I find myself often, I think that there are many, many, many talented people. Um, our definitions may be slightly different, but I could be sitting in a doctor's office and I'm looking at a receptionist who is, has just answered like 20 phone calls written prescriptions and done all these things. Their kid is sitting there on the side of the room. The mom is juggling these phone calls while helping the kid with the homework. And they're deciding what they're going to have for dinner. This is a lot of things going on. Women are the masters of multitasking because any one of those things would make my eyes completely cross. And so when I see things like that, and I see it very often, I find the need to call these people out and tell them how much I admire their talent and their ability and the skills that they possess, because these are things that I could not even begin to. And I would imagine most men would just collapse under the weight of five minutes of that kind of activity. So having said all that, Christine is here today, not only as my guest, but she is also producing this show as we speak, produced the show right before for this one and we'll be producing the show right after this one so she is she is the wizard of oz truly it is not a little white man it is christine mcgyver <laughs> mcgyver <laughs> in canada and so um but i just wanted to point that out because again that real life true examples of amazing uh, abilities that i think are admirable and um and worth noting for sure so we were let we are back in our discussion about women in business and um, the challenges. We were just talking about uh, limitations um, that um, uh, limitations in funding uh, business endeavors and uh, that. So next was balancing responsibilities. And so, Christine, again, this is balancing responsibilities is a great segue from this little story I just told about sort of juggling. All that, all that one has in their life um, with being mom, being provider in some cases, get, you know, again, um, uh, paying those bills um, mm -hmm. and running a business. Um, so talk to me about balancing responsibilities and the challenges that yeah. exist there. The, the, the balance act is real. The balance act is real. I am, uh, you know, I'm mother of two children. They're adults. Uh, my son lives abroad. He's lived abroad since 2012. Um, but he's still my son and he still needs his mom sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and then I have a daughter that lives close by who's very, um, very much challenged right now she's coming out of having had a very bad car accident mm. and going through a lot of uh, changes with lawyers and medical and, and caregiver you know all sorts of stuff and she's doing well she's doing well but it's a lot of juggle and you know she is and needs to be my first priority she needs to have someone there that has got her back to make sure that you know she's being guided and and yet at the same time you know just let her she's also an adult so it's it's this where do i need to step in i'm also have an elderly mother my mother's 97 amazing amazing woman amazing. yeah <laughs> and um i'm one of her primary caregivers and so i see her once a week i deal with all of her banking and all of the rest of it so it's you know you don't start out like balancing this many things it's it's a muscle. It's like anything else. If you've not ever balanced this many things, Bill, if you had a child, you would eventually start to, you know, deal with that and go into the doctors and all the rest of that. It's just it's something that you eventually do. Women do have more of a capability of balancing, but you know you have to really look at and get very clear with yourself around what is my priority. What is my priority? You know, my kids know, my family knows, my friends know, hey, when it's live show day, don't bother Christine. 
do not connect. Don't call her. Don't you can text her, but if she don't respond to you, you know she's busy and let her be, right? Right, right. And that was something they had to be taught because a lot of women unfortunately try to be everything for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, we still have to learn. We women have to learn to make themselves a priority and their desires a priority. So it's it's been that's been a learning learning curve as well. But when it's live day, if there's something going on, production, a producer, a host needs me, boom, boom, I'm there. That's the way that I've developed my business, and that's the priority for me. Um, if something's going on with my daughter or something's going on with my mom, everything else is going to take a backseat. And so somebody else is going to have to deal. And that's, you know, that's the way that it is. And and then it's, you know, learning, learning how to do all of these things. Because, you know, when my mother, you know, I'm the ninth of 10 children. My mother's job was taking care of feeding, clothing, and keeping a household running. And that was a job. That was a big, big job. And once we, you know, once we were all gone from the home, she went back out and and got a job. She wanted to be out in the community, Um, but she was involved in, you know, the church and and the the CWL, which is the Catholic Women's League. And she was involved in a lot of other things, but, you know, her primary job was her family. Well, now women are still the primary caregivers of our family. And we have these desires to be out in the workplace, to be developing, maybe creating at home, whatever our own businesses. So we're, we've had to learn how to do all of this and to still kind of make way for our space in the world. And so it is, um, it's definitely a muscle that we have to continue to exercise. But at the same time, I think that women, what we're learning more and more is we need to be prioritizing our mental health, our emotional health, our physical health. This is extremely important in order for us to continue to be able to move our family and our businesses forward. And so it's not something that is just, you know, you just know it automatically. But, you know, most of us have had these mothers that had, you know, they showed us, you know, I watched my mother, you know, have a one child on her hip making dinner, setting the table, yelling at three other ones, you know, doing a, right. while ironing. Like, you know. right. Exactly, exactly. You know, and, 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 and let, let, let us not forget the, the, the nine months of carrying a child. And again, I, I've yet to meet any man. <laughs> who has ever experienced carrying a child for nine months. And so, no, it's a very unique, um, you know, uh, position. Um, and, and, and again, I hold that in high regard because I'm so grateful that my mom did that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, um, and so it's, it's very easy for me to turn, to flip that script around and become her caregiver at this time. It's like, I can't think of anything I would rather do. Exactly. You know what I mean? yeah. So, so we, you just, you just covered a couple of the, the points. I'm not going to deal with this, the, the, the fear of failure thing, because there obviously has to be um, some other sort of fire burning in the belly to get past that part. So the fact that action takes place is already in defiance from all the giggles and, and jeers from, uh, naysayers. So, so we've already walked through that. The issue, and I think what you were trying to address here was uh, that number four is inadequate support system. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and then gender inequality, which I think we sort of covered, but I think that's a that's an overriding thing in the in it's a man's world. Okay, so we're, we're already looking. Uh, everything's uphill. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Every everything's yes. up uphill battle. So, but the 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 I, I believe what you were starting to suggest with regards to care, caring for oneself, uh, women caring and looking out for and making sure that they remain healthy spiritually and uh, emotionally and and so on. Um, the importance of that. So again, as you were talking, I'm looking at this list of items we didn't even touch yet, inadequate support system. Well, I think the most adequate support system is going to be from self. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you know what I mean? it's true. 
And and women, you know what? I, I wish women would stop apologizing for needing support. You know, there are so many women that I talk to, you know, whether it's through the network or through my coaching business, and they 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 feel like they have to do it all. And and they're not putting their hand up because they believe their self-worth will be lowered. Their self, you know, their people will be looking at them as less than capable if they don't do it all. And that's a crock of shit. We're here. We are here to support each other. And if you need help, if you need support, and we all do, all do, put your hand up. Because, you know, Bill, like just for instance, say from a technology perspective, if there's a host that needs support with technology, put your hand, like, tell me, this is easy for me. It's fast. Let me help you. You know, maybe I'm going to get you to help me with something else. We we have to learn to build our own communities and we've got to stop apologizing when we need help. But we've also got to be willing to bring our voices to the world and share with what we are great at, because there's somebody out there needing that support. Right. Right. Yeah. This, this Amen. is critical because you see the, the, the fact that we still have to climb this big ladder holds a lot of women back from actually sharing what's going on. And we know from a health perspective, what women's health are like, women's health is, I mean, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but women's health is worse than men's. Mm -hmm. Women's, you know, cancer, women's heart attacks, they're higher than men's. And this is why we're trying to do it all. We are amazing at multitasking, but we've got to also put our hands up and ask for help and not feel like, you know, Hey, if I fall apart for five minutes with Bill, is that going to take my credibility down a notch? Well, you know what? If Bill thinks that, then I don't want to be connected with Bill. Right. Yeah. Amen. Right. Like I'm going to fall apart. And then five minutes later, I'm going to wipe my tears and I'm going to get back and to be the brilliant person that I am. Right. And that's where women have got to get over it. Right. And, 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 and that very quality that you're talking about is the very thing that I require you know, um, from agents and that sort of thing. This is why I said what I said, because there's sometimes where it's um, the reason or the rationale may not appear to be, you know what I mean? So, so clean, you know, it's, it's nuanced. Uh, Why don't you like, why are you not excited about this opportunity? And it's like, (laughs) I'm looking at something else. It, it doesn't mean that it doesn't pr- bring some good things, but in the larger scheme, I'm only responsible for me at the end of the day. So um, the fact that I have a feeling that needs to, or a notion about it that needs to be heard. Um, and again, at the, en- at the end of it, maybe I'll change my mind, maybe I won't, but it's just the idea of us being able to, again, uh, allow for connection to be made, to be compassionate toward one another. I, the last thing I need to do is fight with somebody who's <laughs> supposed to be representing my interest. And I'm like, dude, I don't know what you're representing, but maybe you should ask me, right. you know what I mean? Before right. you just do that thing. Right. Um, so no, that makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. So are we ready for another break? They are. Said the producer. Okay. <laughs> I need to have three hats here so I can flip them around. I know, I know. This is amazing. So (laughs) you are listening to Bill Myers Inspires, and we are celebrating uh, Women's History Month, and we're talking about women in business with the CEO of the Inspired Choices Network, Ms. Christine McIver. (laughs) And we'll be back in just a minute. Today, we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Tune in every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bill Myers Inspires as he and his guests take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. Emmy Award-winning actor Bill Myers is an accomplished actor, jazz musician, filmmaker, writer, educator, and speaker. As a biracial man who's both black and white, Bill leverages his background, talent, and voice through creativity, 
compassion, and connection as activism for social justice to focus on uniting the divide and compelling change. Bill Myers Inspires encourages listeners to look within themselves and take decisive action to make a positive difference. For more information, visit his website, BillMyersInspires.com, and sign in for the latest news and updates. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires here on the Inspired Choices Network. We're here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us. And now, let's get back to the conversation. We are back, and you are listening to Bill Myers Inspires with my guest today, Christine McIver. 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 There you go. You got McIver. it. McIver. So I just need to lean into the K sort of sound, McI. right? McI. McI. As opposed to MacGyver, like yeah, the TV show. The G away, yeah. Okay. <laughs> McIver. 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 Okay. All right. See? <laughs> teachable, teachable, teachable. Okay. So, so Christine, we were talking about these various challenges of women in business, and and uh, it's unfortunate because it's it's um, met with so many perceptions that are just false. Like, as I I want to complete this list really quick, just so I can get this out of my way. It is so I, I mentioned uh, limited funding, balancing responsibilities, fear of failure, inadequate support system, gender inequality. Un, uh, limited knowledge. I want that. That one gets me. Uh, unfavorable business environment and timidity. Okay, so I, I those are the other items. I don't understand unfavorable business. You, you know, some of these criteria. Uh, most men that I know in business would not fit. The, the the very same criteria, particularly starting in their business and 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 then needing to shore up some of these shortcomings by what hiring and bringing on other people who have these particular uh, areas of expertise. Because mm-hmm. no no one man is an island. No. No. Uh, there are CEOs Including. that have no idea what the hell's going on on the front line with the work. They just, they, they Including speak well. Women. They... Including women. No yeah. woman is an island. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Like, we, we, every human being in the world needs to know what they're great at, what really lights them up, what internally turns them on. Mm-hmm. And they also need to know when it's time to reach towards, ask for the people that are qualified in the area they need support in, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Hire the people that are great at doing what you need done. And then you do what you're great at. Like we need to get past this. I've got to do it all, which a lot of people in their own business, men and women, they burn themselves out because they're doing that because they make the bottom line the, the reason as opposed to looking at expanding the business and how can they invest in bringing people on to grow the business, as well as we've got to look beyond our own, um, our own time crunch. Like we've got to see, look, I'm killing myself here and I'm wasting my time. I'm wasting what what I can be doing with my business with other people, right? And we've got to see the capabilities of you, the capabilities of me, the capabilities of other people can be such a contribution to our lives and our businesses. It's time. It's time we looked at this. And we were serious about it. And we've, you know, there's so much. I, I'm telling you, Bill. I work with people, you know, I do a lot of business coaching, but I'm telling you the first few times that I'm coaching with somebody, the first few sessions, very quickly, we get into what's going on for them emotionally. 
what's going on for them psychologically and what have they bought into that's holding them back. And it has nothing to do with business. It has everything to do with their self-worth. And, you know, people make decisions of hiring too many people without looking at their own value. And then, and then the opposite is true. Right. And, you know, and women are just as bad as this as men are. But the difference is, and what you've spoken to already, is the support that's available and, and readily available to women and not or ready, readily available to men and not to women. And that's the big difference. Yeah, that's a huge difference. That's a huge difference. Yeah, well, and you know who else is, sorry, one other thing, you know who else is buying into this lie? Women yeah. themselves. Yeah, because it seems to me that that's more smoke and mirrors perception than it is of actual truth. I, I mean, it would seem to me, I mean, I've, again, I've never been a woman, but I'm just saying that it seems to me that there is help and there are people in place that would probably want to help. I, I, you know what I mean? As opposed to someone telling you, well, there's no one to help you. No, you know, you're on your own, you know, that kind of thing. If you believe that, because there's something about that that just uh, contradicts ecology, ecology, the, the, the interdependence of things, you know, um, you know, a leaf needs a branch, a branch needs a tree, um, you know, it needs the wind to assist it on its journey to the ground. Um, it needs a seasonal change in order to renew itself. In other words, everything. So you don't have to be everything. You can be the leaf, the branch, the trunk of the tree, the wind, the, the, the grass, the weather. <laughs> you, right. you know, but all of these things work together. So the idea of anything having to operate independent of ecology, you know, um, doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, I mean, does that make sense? Does that make sense? No. To you? Yeah, what you're saying makes sense. What what's happening doesn't make sense. But again, this this is one huge circle that keeps coming back. The reason that so many women are trying to be the superheroes of their own lives and their businesses is because they don't have the economic support. They're still judged be a be for being a woman. They're still being looked at as, oh, you, you're not dependable because your child could get sick and your husband's not going to, he's not going to quit his job. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm still insulted today when people ask me if I'm, so what's your marital status? It's like, what does that have to do with my economic ability? Right. You know? Right. How many times do they ask men, what's your marital status? That's, that's not really a deciding factor for a man to get economic support. So if you answer you're divorced, it's like, well, she's untrustworthy. <laughs> I mean, it's, oh, it's, it's, she it's, must be caring, you know, and, and it, the person that's making these decisions, oh, I was married and I was divorced and this woman took me for everything. I wonder if she's a bitch like that when mine was. Yeah, that's, right? like, everybody brings their personal perspective to the table, which impacts us. You know, it's like I said, oh, the time is flying here. Just your producer is telling you right now. Um, <laughs> like you've talked on different shows. I wanted to, to create a way to uh, receive resumes um, and evaluate resumes based on the c capabilities and the education and the past experience. Nothing to do with anything that's under the human rights code. You know, nothing to do with your age, your sex, um, your gender, your, your, you know, anything at all. And I would love for the same thing to be able to be put in place for a financial resources. You know, it should have nothing to do with any of those particular. Stop asking what my marital status is. It's none of your damn business. I'm, I've got seven husbands and three wives. What do you want to know? Like, it makes me crazy. It, it really, it does. And I, and I think it's a very unjust thing to ask people, both men and women. Well, you know, the, the, the game, you know, the, the, the financial game, the market, you know, the, it, you know, I hate to use stuff like it's rigged or whatever, but my experience has been 
that most folks uh, I've sat on grant committees and all that sort of stuff for the state, you know, and all these sorts of things. And um, oftentimes what I discover over and over are the people who wind up getting the money <laughs> are the people who least need any financial assistance at all. Right. Um, so therefore it becomes sort of a bilking of this system and it's not true. It's not the, the, the weight of those resources are not going to meet the need that they espouse themselves to do. It's being, there's a cut of it going to some wealthy pocket somewhere, buying an umbrella, sitting in a Mai Tai, you know what I mean? Somewhere on a beach. And it's like, wait a minute. This makes no sense at all. Exactly. Yet then they draw the numbers up and say, hey, we're, we're giving you all this support, billions and billions and billions. And you go, yeah, you're running this number thing, but case by case, three quarters of that money is never seeing the light of day. It's never meeting the need, really? the actual need. Yes. Yeah. Great. So anyway, bitch, bitch, bitch. <laughs> All right. So are, are we are we ready for our last one here? Or are we? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires, and I'm here with my guest today, Christine McCurr. <laughs> today, we are facing some of the greatest challenges of our lives, from our health to political unrest, the environment, financial uncertainty, and the nation's racial divide. Tune in every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Bill Myers Inspires as he and his guests take a deep dive into the issues that impact our world with an eye to exploring solutions. Emmy Award winning actor Bill Myers is an accomplished actor, jazz musician, filmmaker, writer, educator, and speaker. As a biracial man who's both black and white, Bill leverages his background, talent, and voice through creativity, compassion, and connection as activism for social justice to focus on uniting the divide and compelling change. Bill Myers Inspires encourages listeners to look within themselves and take decisive action to make a positive difference. For more information, visit his website, BillMyersInspires.com, and sign in for the latest news and updates. You're listening to Bill Myers Inspires here on the Inspired Choices Network. We're here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for joining us. And now... Let's get back to the conversation. We are back, and you're listening to Bill Myers Inspires on the Inspired Choices Network. And we have today with us the CEO of the Inspired Choices Network, founder and owner, Christine McIver, who's also uh, being the Wizard of Oz today. You know, I, I, I just want to say before we get, get out of here, and it sounds like we're just, you know, kind of just uh, airing the dirty laundry of this. The, the truth is the good news, the good news is that women are leading the way. Women are creating successful businesses. They are doing amazing things. I've had some amazing guests here. Uh, Kadifa Wong, filmmaker. I've had, I mean, just, um, you know, Jennifer Austin Jones in, in New York City, you know, representing uh, social work and different efforts there. These are amazing women. And so um, I, I, the, the month will not be long enough for me to, to honor all of them. Uh, Stacy Myers, who made it possible for me to bring on Woody Myers. But I want to say a shout out to Stacy Myers. But so women are doing amazing things. They are indeed leading the way and are the, the newest trailblazers on the block and, and doing amazing, amazing things. So, Christine, you're one of them doing some amazing stuff. So tell us what's on the horizon for the Inspired Choices Network. Is it 3D? What What is it? Video game? What, what, what's, what Video game. Oh, Lord, man. I can't stand <laughs> video game. No, we are not doing video games up in here. You know, really, my biggest thing has always been to hear what other people have to say. I love to hear the brilliance of other people, what's going on in their world. How can we create a world where we're really coming together as a community, loving and supporting each other 
and each and every person's voice. I know you hear this all the time, but this is this is really what has driven the creation of this is everyone's voice matters. You know something yeah. I don't know. And I know something you don't know. Let's put our heads together. Let's let's look at what we can create. And so for the network, it's really bringing on different perspectives, different topics. How can we bring, how can we make a contribution to the world and, and bring those voices forward so that we are changing th- something. We're changing something in the world for everyone. And so, you know, right now we are on, um, we're on, you know, with ra- live radio, uh, live, uh, our TV, our podcasting, we're on over 220 platforms. And yeah, we, I've always, I'm like, where else? What else? Where else? Well, else? I've got something come down the pipe. I can't tell you yet, but it's coming soon. I'm excited about All it. All right now. <laughs> She's giggling, folks. She's giggling. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, always looking at what's changing out there and how can we support to bring these people that, that are looking for a way to bring their voice to the world and that want to make a contribution in the world and want to make a difference. And that's that's what we do here. And that's what I'll continue to do. So we've we've got our finger on the pulse of what's happening in the world and seeing how will how is it going to work and how can we make it easeful because I don't believe in just jumping on every bandwagon. Um, I think that we can drive business owners crazy with you mean I have to do all of these things. So we're always here trying to figure out how can I make this easy, um, duplicatable and something that can can definitely move into their lives. How, how can we do that? So that I'm always thinking about that. You know, I'm, I know that I'm a natural teacher so that that's always part of my mind. It's like, okay, I'm thinking about everybody else. Okay. What can we do? So we've been evolving for, since, you know, we started this, um, uh, Inspire Choices Network started in 2017. I started producing in 2014 and started my own show in 2011. You know, I never started out to do any of this. I, It's hilarious how I got to this point, but hey, we're here and we're having a great time and we have fabulous guests and, and fabulous hosts like yourself on the network and we're we're creating a ripple and I'm loving it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you know, again, it's, uh, as I was listening to you, it, it just reminds me once again, it, it, it sits right in my mantra of creativity connection, compassion. Um, and as long as those things are being met, I am a happy camper and I'm, and I'm right where I'm supposed to be. And it sounds like that's where you are. And so I'm happy and you're happy. And wouldn't you like to be happy too? <laughs> happy dance, jazz hands, whatever it's got to be. I'm going to have a sip of coffee. <laughs> Look at that. That's nice. Adorable mug. I like that mug. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I love that mug. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it's been fabulous. Uh, Chris, Christine, it's been great having you on here. And um, and I hope that this won't be the last time um, we, we will bring you out when you're ready to announce the, the, the thing that makes you giggle the most. And, um, and we will share that with the, the audience here. And you know, it's just, it's hey. an honor. It's an honor to have you here. And I'm, I'm glad to be with the Inspired Choices Network. I'm glad you are too. It's so much fun listening to you and watching you and, and all the different people that you bring in and the different conversations. It's, it's expanded my world. It, it, I genuinely mm-hmm. say that it's expanded my world. And, you know, this white chick from Ontario is learning a lot more. So it's That's good. Awesome. And I love that I get to, I've created a platform where I get to have fun. (laughs) Right. Yeah. You know, if it's not fun, then, Hey, what is it? You know, (laughs) right. Yeah. What the hell are you doing? Um, So yeah, no, this has been great. So, so um, now tell us, Oh, uh, quickly your show, your schedule. Uh, Inspired choices is the name of my show. It's on Wednesdays at 8 PM Eastern, seven central six mountain, Five Pacific. Holy crap. I can't even keep <laughs> okay, Bill, I'm going to probably cut us off. So take us, take us away. <laughs> okay. You've been listening to Bill Myers Inspires with my guest today, Christine McIver. Thank you. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for spending your afternoon right here with us at Bill Myers Inspires. 
Remember, we're here every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Inspired Choices Network. Remember to take time this week to take a breath and look within yourself and figure out how you can make a positive difference in this world. Spread the word, and we'll see you here next Friday. Have a wonderful week.